Yeah, I mean, that's the, the the NBA is fully aware of the world we live in, but man, for two. Why not? In the preseason, you know, we're not going to solve everything, but we're going to find out who plays with who and who's developed a little bit. And sure. this, this Warrior team's going to look unlike any we have seen in recent vintage. The three point shooting isn't quite there, but the length, athleticism, and maybe rip and run style will be uh, something to get used to and I think something we'll have some fun with. We're going to talk about the Warriors are super athletic and they added some athletes so you've got to take advantage of that in transition. Get out in transition. That's going to be a big part of any success they have this season and this is a good test for them because this Nuggets team who obviously had an incredible performance in the bubble, super inspiring performance in the bubble they will throw a lot at you on the offensive side, handoffs, pick and roll, misdirection, all kinds of stuff. But they play kind of slow. They were the second slowest pace in the league last year. So the Warriors want to get up and down. They're going to have to do some things and be a little more intentional about getting the ball out of the rim and running. So Jamal Murray and Gary Harris will open with Millsap and Michael Porter Jr. Jokic. Got a whistle earlier for the Warriors. It'll be Steph and Kelly Oubre with Wiggins, Eric Paschal, and Kavon Looney. So we'll not see James Wiseman or Draymond Green tonight. But everybody else is in uniform and ready to roll. So Jokic, he and Murray were just spectacular in the bubble in Orlando. Finally losing to the Lakers in the Western Finals. Pass inside, and Millsap flipping it up and out. And here's Steph Curry Murray. And I tell you what, Steph Curry, he had Jamal Murray like in a lookalike situation in the playoffs. <laughs> Murray was fantastic, scoring 40. Seemed like every time he was playing Donovan Mitchell. Oh, Jamal Murray was super impressive. I, one of the things about him that I always talked about was his lack of consistency. And now that's not the case. Even when he's not the top of his game, he can be affected. But when he is on, he is special. You saw Kamon Looney just stay tall, not commit the foul as Gary Harris ran into him. And this is where the Warriors want to score in transition. The Nuggets knew that and got back into their 2-3 zone. And Wiggins lasers in a three. So Oubre missed one, but Andrew Wiggins hits his first triple. His eyes lit up when he saw Nikolai Jokic on him. He's like, I got to go at this dude's life. Just get a little separation, knock it down. A two-man game, Jokic and Murray. They begin almost every possession with those two and then satellite off of them. Shot clock down to five and beautiful cut by Gary Harris to flip it up and in. You always have to be alert off the ball offense with this team. If it's Nikolai Jokic with the ball that time, Jamal Murray made a nice backdoor pass and Jamal Murray almost came up with one there. He's going to try to go made a nice backdoor pass and Jamal Murray almost came up with one there. He's going to try to could have given the Lakers even a longer series. There is no quit in this team. They got Gary Harris back who almost knocked down that three there. It's fun to watch when a team is inspired and they're playing for each other and they're having a good time like the Warriors were doing. That seems to be good. That works. Take advantage of mismatches and Nikolai Jokic is on you and your Andrew Wiggins. Go to work. Steph Curry, Nikolai Jokic doesn't want to be up on those screens. And you got to love Kelly Oubre spotting up in the corner. That's just good ball movement. Good vision from Eric Paschal. Catch the defense in a compromised position. Make him pay. So you just you made a great point. If the three comes off good ball movement, that's fine. If you just settle for threes with no movement, that's not what Steve Kerr wants. Oh, yeah, you, you got to get good shots. Your shot selection has to be on point, especially with this group. And the ball movement has to be on point. So Oubre missing the three there off the Steph creation. And they run. Uh, Jokic has the hump. How about Oubre? Met Porter up top. Yeah, Oubre had this. That, uh, he was behind there, and he recovered really well. Michael Porter Jr. had to step on him. That was off that Oubre defense. You saw the Warriors in transition. They're going to try to, you know, you got to wear max so you don't have to dress up as much. <laughs> Get the ties out of there. They did that in Orlando, and the coaches' association voted. Okay, but what they want is uniformity. Either everybody's wearing it, you know, coat and tie on your staff, and then everybody's wearing golf shirts, you know, with the dress slacks and things like that. What they don't want is a mismatch of, <laughs> of all kinds of stuff going on. Yeah, they all look good. We're in the same shirt. 
Porter, man. What a great quick release. And you, you just can't ever leave him. He can do a lot offensively. And you can do a lot with him. That time is just a wide hit-down screen. It's Kent Bazemore. See, that's just that scattered break. But if it's a guy like Bazemore Oubre, get it ahead, and that's a better shot than milking the shot clock and maybe forcing something else. As soon as he gets in the game, he's having an impact. you got to love that. That's one thing we were talking about, too. When you join a team, get to whatever it is you do. The Bazemore-Curry friendship is well-documented. And Bazemore got the big money in Atlanta. Then he got moved to Sacramento and Portland. And so his choice this year is a free agent to come back for the Dubs. I think that Bob Myers, whether it be Brad Wanamaker, who we'll see tonight, Bazemore, and Kelly Oubre, I think the Warriors had a very good offseason. And then, oh, by the way, got James Wiseman and Nico Mannion as Monte Morris, fresh off a contract extension, checks in for the Nuggets. He needed some secondary ball handling. Brad Wanamaker, he's not going to be flashy. It's kind of a blue-collar point guard, but he just knows how to play the game. Really good decision maker, good pick-and-roll player, good vision. Uh, but now what's interesting, remember, these other guys haven't played with Steph really either. No, they haven't. It's a work in progress. Yeah, so... I mean, you're going to see not only the preseason, but through the early part of the season, this is a Warrior group that has not played much together whatsoever. They will build the chemistry. Michael Porter Jr., off back iron. Marquise Chris stayed with that rebound again. Anything you can get transition. And Oubre finishes it. That is going to be the Warriors 20, 20, 20, 21 right there. That play. And he knew Michael Porter Jr. was bearing down on him from behind. So he compensated for that Euro step and just fade away to his right as Michael Porter Jr. is flying in from his left. Jokic, face up on Marquise. Try to back him down. A little spin move. And then just the skills of Nikola Jokic. Pivot game. Footwork. <laughs> He's so slippery. How do you guard a guy like that? He's got every shot, flip shots, mid-range jumpers. Tough. Eric Pascal. That jumper, it does. And it's very smooth. It, there was a jump and a little bit of a hitch last year. Yeah. Now it's just kind of a straight up and even out to the three-point line. And so Pascal hits it. The mandatory timeout as Denver takes time with the Dubs of three. So Kalina says play defense, get out in transition, and score that way. I'd say that worked out pretty good. It did. Full court press, get your energy up, active hands, get the strip, and Kent Bays on the other side knows how to finish. Marquise Chris passed up the three there. Shot clock at nine. Wanamaker on the toss back. Shot clock at three. Baysmore's got to bail him out, and he does. Listen, the poise under pressure. That's why they got him. That's why he's here. Now, Facundo Campaza from Real Madrid has checked in for Denver. I'm anxious to see him as Jokic you know drops what? that in. Think J.J. Barea. Okay. With him. That, that's who people remi he reminds people of. He, he's got that aggressiveness and, and the quickness at his size. He can get penetration. Tough, gritty player. Obviously, he's small, but he has a big heart. He's a great passer. They call him the magician. But Campasa with Monte Morris, they're playing that kind of mighty might backwards. So I like the Berea thing because the Mavericks used to do that a lot. We've got the foul as Jokic cut down the lane. Nikolai Jokic, you can do a lot with him. Obviously, they're rolling to the basket. Got to be alert on the weak side. Make it tough on him at the rim. You mentioned Mason Plumley leaving, but Jermichael Green has checked in. And so Jermichael Green was an uh, acquisition coming over from the Clippers, playing with Campaza and Monte Morris, P.J. Dozier. And right down the lane, we have Juan Toscano Anderson committing the foul. So that time Juan Toscano got in from the weak side, tried to meet him at the top. He's got him with the body a little bit. It's tough with those pick and rolls. Isaiah Hartenstein had been in Houston for a couple years. And you know, this is the backup depth when you lose Jeremy Grant and you lose Plumley. You're looking for bodies there. The new Warriors Oakland Forever gear is here. 47 years in Oakland, forever part of the DNA. And you can rep Oakland by visiting the Warriors shop at Thrive City. With supplies available for the holidays. That Oakland Forever stuff, you see Steph in the jersey there? Mm -hmm. They can't keep it on the shelves. Oh, I mean, it's good. amazing. It, it's like the amount of merchandise of Oakland Forever has equaled like post championship merchandise levels. That's the interest in that Oakland Forever. I love it. 
I love it. There's off jersey. There's going to be a court. We're going to see some home games that have that court. And that, that's coming out of Buki. We believe oh, the horse. Forever stuff. I'm loving them with it. A beautiful pass, but Baysmore couldn't finish. He does move well without the ball, too. Michael Green off iron. Hartenstein working that glass, and Jordan Poole going to let it out. Now, we're going to talk to Joe Lacob and Bob Myers throughout the broadcast, so we'll get the boss on in the second quarter. But I think everybody with the Warriors is excited for the team to be back, but also, how's this team going to look? What are the combos going to be like? Who's going to play well with each other? I mean, this it's just been a fun conversation from everybody associated with the franchise. Well, Joe Lacob is a winner, and that's one thing we saw with him in the offseason, he is not afraid to spend that money, and he did everything he could to address the issues that the Warriors had. Brought in Kelly Oubre Jr., obviously with Clay going down. Everybody was sad to see that, but that's everything. Having an owner that wants to win at all costs. Well, also, too, in terms of the luxury tax, Joe Lake of Peter Goober, the Warrior ownership, was like, the fan base is too good, a bit too loyal. Uh, we're going to spend the money. Yeah. You know, and you don't have a lot of owners that, that do that to that level. Yeah. The ownership is on it. I think Bob Myers said it at the James Wiseman, Nico Mania press conference. I've never been told no financially. <laughs> Can we be better? Let's be better. Yeah. Bob Myers had to be like, are you sure? <laughs> okay. Monte Morris missing the floater. Hartenstein inside. That's one. If you're the Warriors and you want to have calling card be the defense, the defensive stop's not done until you pull the rebound. On Toscano Anderson. Missing off iron there. And then that last roster spot, Michael Mulder, Juan Toscano Anderson, Alex Tupon. It's a battle to see who's going to make this team. There's going to be some healthy competition, so you want to be assertive. Especially now. Look at Campazzo. You can travel in Europe, but not the NBA. <laughs> a little double dribble. <laughs> Leon Woodson, I've seen enough of that in Argentina. Campazzo solid. He just needs to be more consistent all the way around with his jumper. He talked about his passing ability. He's got a high basketball IQ. Well, the thing is, you play at Real Madrid. The ACB League is the second best league in the world outside of the NBA. You know, Luka Doncic was in the ACB League. Okay, so if you start to show out there, then teams start to look at you. And Denver been scouting him for a couple years, actually. Jordan Poole, that's a strong move. Created his own shot, rose up for it, new haircut and all, and the three-point play opportunity. Fresh. We talked about Jordan Poole, refocused last year. He rejects the ball screen, a little indecision, Hartenstein's not close enough, rise up and take your shot with confidence. Gotta love it. Again, he was trending in the right direction before that shutdown, and his confidence right now is through the roof, and he's trying to be a staple in the rotation and show the coaching staff, hey, I'm ready to take that next step. I'll tell you, the Warrior minicap in September, he was the best player. He, he was fantastic. Campazzo. P.J. Dozier will step into a three, but now that's a mistake in terms of when you contest threes, it's got to be like that, you know, puncher in football, fly across him and not into the shooter and land on him. This is a bad trend in the NBA, fouling shooters and... We used to do a little drill growing up in basketball camps, second, third grade, fourth grade, where you chop your feet on the closeout and close out under control so you don't run into the shooter or come up under the shooter. Like you said, flying by on the shooting hand side is an option. You just have to have some discipline. And I know you're in recovery mode there. Obviously, Jordan Poole was in help position trying to clog up that role. And then you got to fire back out. Defense in the NBA is tough. But you have to remember to stay disciplined there. When you're trying to recover out through your shooter, contest, go as straight up as you can under control. Well, you think about it, and this is directly from the Houston playbook, the most efficient scoring play in the NBA is three free throws for a decent three-point shooter. It's even better, you know, Great free, you know, three-point shooters only make them 40% of the time, right? Right. But if you're an 80% free thrower and you get three free throws, you're going to have more than two points on that possession. So you just don't want to foul three-point shooters. It's one of the cardinal sins, foul a jump shooter. How about Marquis Chris? Gotta love him. He was playing well last year. He's one of my favorite guys to watch on this team. 
understands how to roll to the basket hard. He's got really good hands, super athletic. He had some crazy highlights last year with some blocks, some crazy dunks, alley catches. Well, that was smart. He retreated, did not commit the foul, forced a miss, and then here are the Warriors in transition again. We're going to say that a lot this year. Jordan Poole catch and shoot three, and he drops it in. Kim Bays won't make that happen. Lead the break, get into the paint, draw the defense in, kick it out. One more pass, wide open. Good look. Kind of liking the second unit. They're working. Wanamaker and Poole putting a little something together here. So the final eight seconds of the first quarter, Kampaza with a little one four set. Drop it in. Nearly deflected, Monte Morris. And that'll be well short. So the Warriors. They started making three. 